Good morning, my name is Jacob Folger, I'm an artist sculptor and today we're going to make a fairy door and we're going to do it with uh, polymer clay. Now I always like to knead the clay a little bit, they call it conditioning and it gets everything mixed up right so that when you bake it, it all comes together the way it should be. And we're going to start off by rolling balls all the same size and these will be for the bricks. Um, for the frame of the uh, fairy door. So if one turns out a little bit big, you want to pull a little bit of clay off, roll it again, and uh, I'm actually pretty good at this. I don't have a lot of problem making balls the same size. Once we've got the all the balls made, then we're going to squeeze them on each side to form the shape of bricks. Flatten them on the end. That's what it should look like. And because we've got balls all the same size, when we make a brick, they should look uh, should be about the same size. And you'll have to do some shaping, of course, to uh, make them the same. It's best to probably just get all your bricks together before you start uh, the frame. And when we put the bricks together, we're going to use wire, basically a, a piece of wire about an inch long, and uh, and we'll just uh, and that will strengthen it. Uh, I, I like to try to when I make something uh, out of polymer clay or any kind of clay, I, I try to make it build it really well so that it'll last many many years. So here I take a little bit of wire and insert it into the end of the first brick. But before I uh, put them together, I'm going to score the end of the brick with a uh, sculpting tool. Both sides, both uh, both uh, both bricks, and that will help the pieces bond. Uh, well to each other. And when I put them together I sort of twist and push at the same time. You see I'm, I'm scoring uh, as I join the pieces. Now there's going to be a complete tool and supply list um, in the video description and uh, there will also be the baking instructions for the clay we are using which is Sculpey 3 polymer clay. If you're using another type of clay you might want to uh, check the instructions for that, that particular clay that you're using. I use black clay because you'll see it, uh, later on uh, when, when we do the finish on it uh, that it just it really looks good on the black clay. So even though there is wire in there, you still can move the frame around. So you can, uh, as you're building it, you can shape it uh, the way you like. And the reason why I do separate bricks as opposed to just a, like a you know a straight uh, maybe a shape of clay running along the end of the uh, the window frame is because if you do separate bricks then they look like separate bricks and uh, it's really hard to to carve that and actually make it look like separate bricks. So I'm basically just shaping it here to kind of get it, the the door frame to be the shape I want. Now I'm shaping kind of a little uh, crown to go on top that's got a little spiral at the top and, and I'll sculpt that in fully later.
one of the fun things about sculpting is that you can, you know, you can do what you want. You can be creative. You can, you know, I had no idea I was going to put that thing on there, but when I started uh, sculpting, it, you know, it just came like, oh, I got to do that. That will look really nice. Now I'm kneading the clay again, conditioning it as I told you earlier, and I'm going to take off bits of clay and I'm going to sculpt them in to make the actual door. If I didn't do this, then we wouldn't be able to sculpt the door really. This gives us, you know, a base to work from to make it look like a door with hinges and a doorknob and all that. I do want the thickness of that to be uniform it can be somewhere between an eighth and a quarter inch and uh, I do want it semi smooth but I do want it to be rough with lots of texture because I just love a lot of texture and my finishes look great on texture so uh, that's real important to me so that can be rough but we do want it fairly uniform and so I'm blending it with my thumb. You can use a tool. And then the other thing I do is I take this wood sculpting tool here and I blend it into the ends uh, or to where the door will be joining the brick. And that way it will be stronger and uh, a lot cleaner looking. You can grade the door uh, by just uh, rubbing the tool on it again using your fingers as well now I'm sculpting in the lines to define the door wood planks because this is going to be basically a, we're sculpting a wood door and we want it to look like wood so in order to do that I'm uh, defining wood planks uh, going up and down the, do uh, the, uh, the door just using a sculpting tool and carving in those wood planks. Now what I'm doing is I'm outlining the window for the door. I do the outline first, basically drawing what shape I want. If I don't like the shape, I can erase it before I actually start making the cuts. And then I cut deeper and deeper until the window uh, is there. And then I pull it out, pull out the piece. And then I'll clean up the edges on the inside. Now what I'll do is take a piece of, uh, piece of clay and put it in there to divide the imaginary window uh, lights, we call them, they're called lights. There's going to be four lights in this uh, window. Once you get these in there, you can also uh, uh, strengthen them with little bits of wire by inserting the wire slightly from an angle on the door side into them, burying them in the clay, and then uh, healing the little mark that the wire made. Try to use as much wire as you can. It will be in the tool and supply list. It's very easy to, uh, to get a hold of and uh, there's all kinds of different ones. I suggest uh, 18 gauge steel wire or copper wire you could use. Also brass wire. It really doesn't matter. But 18 gauge is a good, uh, a good thickness to use. So here I'm blending now the pieces together just to kind of make it smooth. So there's the imaginary window. Now you could add glass and you could even add a candle to burn in behind it or some kind of tea light or something like that if you want to be uh, imaginative. Now what I'm doing is I'm creating the doorknob plate Kind of like forming it the same way as we did the bricks, 
flattening it a little bit more than the bricks. It's a rectangular shape. And then that goes on the door. You should always score pieces. Uh, you may not see them because I'm blending the video here, but you always want to score. And I take a uh, the back of a paintbrush to drill a little hole to start the keyhole. And then I use a wood tool and kind of fan it back and forth to create the shape of the uh, keyhole. And then I just play with it, and uh, as you can see, it looks pretty good. Then I roll a ball of clay and put that above the keyhole, and that gives me a doorknob. Now I'm rolling, I'm, I'm beginning to make the hinges for the door, and I'm rolling noodles of clay. I'm going to make them a, a more sharp at the ends, and I want all of them to be about the same size. There's going to be four of these noodles, and then I'll show you how I put them together. There'll be two for each hinge. Now I do roll a lot between my fingers because I do this a lot, but um, if you're not used to that, you can uh, also roll uh, balls and noodles between the palms of your hands. I've always noticed that if you need uh, multiples of anything, the best thing to do is make them before you actually start assembling and that sort of thing because then you've got everything's about the same size. Now I put these two pieces together. I'm blending them at the bottom so that they look like one piece. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to roll out and kind of uh, turn into a spiral each side. And then lay it on the door. Again, whenever you join two pieces of clay, score both places, pieces before you put them together. Once you've got the hinges on, you can also add a little nut or screw by just rolling a ball of clay and putting it on the hinges, hinges as you can see there. Now what I'm going to do is I'm creating a um, base for the door to stand up. I'm using wire again as I put the pieces together. I'm scoring both uh, ends. Here you can see me scoring the bottom of the door. And, uh, and we're making this slab basically to, um, we can still sculpt off of it, put things on it, and that sort of thing. But also, it would be functional as in, we can use it uh, to um, stand the door up once it's baked. Now, what I'm using here is a, is a Reynolds Wrap heavy-duty box. And that will tell me whether or not the door, is, uh, the door base is 90 degree angle to the back of the uh, door. I'm pressing it in and making sure that that door base is is there. If I didn't do that, the door may not stand up when I uh, after I bake it. Before I bake it, I'll check it again. I think it's really nice if you can just, if you want to put the door, your door on an, on a mantle or anywhere really, it's just nice to be able to stand it up. Now I'm rolling two balls here and they're going to be for the little lights that will go on the outside of the door. 
While my door is rough and has uh, a great deal of texture, which I really like, it will also have an enormous amount of detail. We're going to put a lot of detail on this door. Fairy doors, I think, should be a lot of fun. And, uh, you know, if it was just as it is now, it's fun, but not near as fun as uh, after we uh, uh, add a lot of uh, great detail to it. So it's going to look really, you know, rough in a lot of ways and rustic and old. But it's going to have a lot of detail, so it's going to be a lot of fun. Now what I'm doing is I'm rolling uh, noodles of clay, and this is going to be for the vines going around the door. I like to roll them on a table, piece of paper, so they stay clean. And then um, I lay them on. And when I lay them on, if you'll notice, I'm, I'm not just having them arrive outside of the, the uh, base of the door. I'm actually bringing them in from the back. So they actually look like they're coming from somewhere as opposed to just, like I say, arriving you know, out of a piece of concrete, which vines can do. But I want, you know, this is kind of where I'm just trying to let you know that you, you want it to, you know, you want it to be fun and appear, but you want it to appear as uh, as real as possible. And then I do little twisties, you know, to um, kind of add some whimsy to the to the end of the uh, the vines. Your vines can, of course, go over to the door. I don't know if you've ever seen, uh, you know, vines, but they are tenacious little creatures. <laughs> And they can get anywhere, you know, they can come and they'll go and grow all around everything. So uh, they're kind of, uh, kind of fun like that. Now, one thing I definitely want to tell you is this I would consider a beginner project. It's very intricate and there's a lot going on. But if you don't practice, then you can never get really good. At first, your hands are not going to be used to things the way mine are. But with time and practice, they'll get better. But you've got to practice. This project, I'm showing you basically exactly what to do and how to do it. And you can just follow along. You may have to pause the video to stay with me and just stop and, you know, with what I'm doing. You may have to take breaks. Um, you definitely want to be patient with yourself, patient with your hands, patient with your eye-hand coordination. You know, don't get frustrated with yourself if you're just starting out. It takes a little getting used to, but this still is definitely a beginner project. And also advanced. Anybody that wants to make this door can make this door. Now what I'm doing is making little round balls of clay and I'm flattening them and then I'm kind of rolling it. See how I'm rolling that there? That is now a petal for a flower. I often make flowers this way. Of course you can make them all kinds of different ways, but this is kind of fun and they look like almost like little roses. You just roll them together like that. It can be random if you want. Add, you know, four or five uh, little uh, flats or petals to it. 
make it as big as you want, as small as you want. Now, somebody asked me once, they said, how do you join two pieces of clay without messing them up? I mean, if you squeeze them together, they tell, you know, they get all messed up. Well, wire is really a great way to do that. So I just put a little piece of wire in. I'm going to cut it to make it a little bit smaller. So, And now I'm just taking the flower and without uh, deforming the flower, I just basically put it on the wire and there you are. So if you sculpt a little face of a fairy or something like that, you spend all this time sculpting the face and then you want to join it to the shoulders or the neck, you can do that now. This here is a mushroom. This is I'm making a mushroom cap and now I'm making a mushroom stock. Basically, it's a noodle of clay that's rolled a little thinner at the end. Kind of like a cone shape. You flatten the bottom. And then again, we're using wire to attach the two pieces together. It just makes everything stronger. And, you know, part of my message in this uh, video today is make it to last. Polymer clay is great stuff. It probably will last a long time, but whenever you're joining two pieces of clay together or to another piece, you definitely want to use wire, use scoring, and uh, make it as strong as you can because you never know. A hundred years from now, your great-grandchildren may have your fairy door and... You're going to make the decision now. Are you going to build it to last so that it's on their mantle? Or are you going to build it to not last and be in a box in the attic? We love that fairy door, but it's broken. We don't know what to do with it. So we'll just hold on to it. In a box in the attic. Or on your mantle. That's what I say. On your mantle. Now I'm... Uh, Sculpting the snail. I'm making a snail. I want a snail on the doorstep. And uh, I started off with a cone shape. Oh, actually, you know, my mistake. That wasn't a, that's not the snail. We'll add the snail later. This is a bottle. I just thought it would be nice to have like a little bottle sitting on the uh, doorstep. I mean, you can add anything you want. You can put animals on there, you can put birds on top of the vines, you, can, you know, you can do anything you want. Take your time, add lots of detail. Now what I'm doing is, uh, kind of the way I make mushrooms is I, after I make the little uh, mushroom caps, put the mushrooms together, I put little balls of clay on uh, on the mushrooms and I flatten them down and press them in which is kind of the way I like to make them and I, when I put the finish on it looks really pretty they, I can make them because I'll, I'll do the mushroom cap in one color and the uh, little uh, dots in another color and it's really pretty A lot of polymer sculptors, uh, clay sculptors, will uh, <clears throat> use different colors of clay and combine them together to make, you know, uh, many, uh, uh, you know, pieces with many colors. There's a lot of ways to do it. And here we go. Here comes the snail. So rolling it in a cone shape, the, the uh, pointy end is the tail. I kind of squeeze and sort of flatten the other end, and that will become the, 
beginning of the head. Now I take an exacto knife uh, or any kind of sharp knife or even scissors for that matter and I cut a little slit and that way I can separate those uh, two parts and end up with basically the little antennae of the snail. And I can just form them a little bit to, and shape them uh, to be kind of like two little cones basically. Now I'm going to use a, a small seashell for his shell and uh, the best way to get that to stick to the clay really good is to seal it so it's not so porous and you can seal it with uh, acrylic or varnish or polyurethane or you know shellac or anything like that acrylic is really the best that I found seal the shell let it dry and then put the clay on it. it will stick a lot better the same thing if you're using stones or pieces of wood or whatever you're using from the earth Before you finish it, you want to take your time and go around and just make sure you got everything good and strong, bonded well to each other. Um, and now we're going to use Pearl X pigments that will be in the tool and supply list. This is antique bronze with a little bit of gold mixed in. And you can apply uh, Pearl X pigments with a finger or a paintbrush. So I just did that with the paintbrush. Here I am doing it with my finger. Um, for me, I, I kind of, I, you know, again, I'm looking for a really rustic, ruddy, raw, you know, uh, natural kind of look. And I want the black to show through. I'm looking for, for me, for an antique, uh, you know, antique-like finish. So I want it, I kind of, I really want that black to shine through. I, I want it to look really old. Um, so, you know, just keep that in mind for me. I mean, you might want it bright and shiny. And if you do, just add more, that's all. A few, a few things you should know is when you're, when you're putting it on, uh, my lid there is kind of almost empty of it, so you know I want, I'm not doing this as much. But you should uh, kind of dab it, so you dip it into the powder and then dab it on like a, a you know a paper towel or something like that if you're not used to using it, because it can go on heavier than you wanted it to. Another thing about Perlite pigments is notice that color I'm using there is pink. It's really not. It's blue. So colors may not be what they appear to be when you're looking at them in the bottle. So keep that in mind. And also, uh, the ProWatch pigments goes a really long ways. A bottle of it costs around $6, um, but it will last for a long, long time. That bottle of purple that I have there, or actually it's called Reflex Violet, is... Um, is uh, I've had it for over four years now, and I use it a lot, so it, it goes a long ways. I'm applying this to the door before I bake it, and that way the finish will last a lot longer. If you're going to put this outdoors, first of all, I don't recommend putting art outdoors, but if you're going to anyways, you want to uh, put some spar varnish on it to seal it. Spar varnish is what they use on boats. Again, the baking instructions are going to be uh, in the video description. Here I'm putting silver on the bottle and on the door um, knob and the door knob plate and the hinges. And I'm using a, a, a light touch. I want it to look old. I don't want it to look like uh, I just did it. Now 
this is spring green that I'm putting on the uh, vines. I'm going to put the names of all the colors in the uh, tool and supply list. Another nice thing about this finish is that it, you don't have to get every tiny little edge all the way up to the door frame like you might with paint. Um, you know, since it's the antique finish and verdigris or uh, patina finish, it, it doesn't require that. So it's, it's actually very easy to do these finishes and, uh, fairly quickly, uh, quick as well. And they just, to me, I think they just look amazing. Now what I'm doing is putting a little bit of bronze on those dots that are on the uh, mushroom caps. To see it in person, I mean, that's when you can really grasp it. It's, it's just gorgeous. If you like this kind of content, this is the kind of videos that I do on, on my channel on YouTube. Uh, please subscribe to my channel. Please rate the video. Let me know whether you like it or not. And uh, comment to leave a comment. You can also send pictures of the things you make to my email address on the about page um, on, my, uh, on my channel on YouTube. Thank you so much for watching. Have a great day.